live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Pure Accelerate 2017. Brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome to Pier 70 in San Francisco, everybody. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Stu Miniman, and this is Pure Accelerate 2017. Pure Storage in 2009 started a big wave of flash migrations, and the company's strategy was to specifically go after the large EMC install base of older Symmetrics, mainframe class storage, and even to a certain extent VNX and, and, and Clarion, if, if anybody remembers those terms, uh, the install base. Pure's ascendancy was really a function of shifting from spinning disk to flash. Fast forward seven, eight, nine years later, and Pure is talking about big data and AI and machine learning and IoT, and is really trying to completely transform not only the storage industry, but itself uh, as a leading player. The last time an independent storage company hit a billion dollars was about 20 years ago, a company called NetApp. Pure is trying to be the next to be a billion dollar company. Stu Miniman, a lot of action going on here. It used to be in the back, back in the day, I bought EMC for block, NetApp for file. Pure is trying to change that. Yeah, and, and Dave, you know, storage, you know, we, we, we've talked about it, when Dell bought EMC, what did that mean to the whole storage industry? I wrote an article uh, when it happened and said it's the end of the storage industry as we know it. When I came in here, it was like, oh, you know, we're going to be talking about storage? You know, you mentioned NetApp. I was at a NetApp event last week and they said storing is boring. Um, it's really about, it's about the data, it's about the new applications. I really liked in the keynote, they were talking about new use cases, new applications. How do they fit into that multi-cloud world? Uh, you know, really interesting to hear, you know, Scott Deaton, who we known since this company was in stealth, uh, you know, laying out where the company is. They've got over 3,300 customers, a um, lot of SaaS applications. Uh, they're talking a lot about the machine learning and the AI pieces that are in here. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, Dave, this is their primary business, is a storage array, uh, replaces, as you said, the traditional, you know, EMC boxes uh, that, that used to be sold. So how much of this is, still kind of an update on what the legacy is doing, how much are they ready for the future, and excited to dig in with some you know, real customers here. Uh, you know, Pure has you know, a good movement, good customer base. Uh, I've always had some you know, good, smart people uh, with good tech. Uh, the Puritans, as they call them, all wearing orange here. So, uh, you know, cool venue and uh, excited to dig in. Well, it's one of the fastest growing companies in the storage business, and, and the IT business. And, and the way that, that, that Pure has gotten there, is it, you know, in its early days, it never really talked much about so-called software-defined, it just did it. One of the problems that Pure attacks is the problem of migration. Uh, David Floyer and Wikibon have written extensively about the cost of migration, the pain of migration. It was almost just assumed, well, if I'm buying storage, I'm going to have to migrate, and I'm going to spend 50, 100, many, sometimes many hundreds of thousands of dollars migrating my workloads from older arrays to newer arrays. Pure storage has this evergreen concept where through the use of software and software-defined technologies, it's able to upgrade new customers, you know, quote unquote seamlessly, there's that over word, overused word again, but it's able to deliver essentially storage as a service even though you're putting an appliance on their site. So it's a, a radically different model. Uh, they've announced some you know, things today, for instance, like three-site data replication, which is very, very complicated trying to simplify that. So a lot of really novel ideas. Again, I come back to their ascendancy. It was really based, to upon attacking the, the slow, expensive spinning disk, using its data reduction technology to create parity between the cost of, of disk, spinning disk, and the cost of flash. Something that David Floria predicted back in 2009 would happen by 2014 for the high spin speed. Now with uh, FlashBlade, which is essentially the file-based system that Pure has, they're going after that same sort of mantra with higher capacity spinning disks, really going after the NetApp base. Yeah, uh, Dave, you mentioned that Pure could be uh, the most recent billion dollar storage company. Uh, the company that might actually beat them to that is Nutanix. Now, of course, Nutanix sells more than just storage. They're hyper-converged infrastructure, which means there's the compute that they're also selling that's being used there, so it's not quite apples to apples, but uh, the last quarter, Nutanix had uh, well, about $10 million more in revenue that Pure did. They also had IPO'd, and that hyper-converged trend 
one of the things that I saw early on on that, Dave, was attacking that migration cost. Hyperconverge, like what Pure does, a software layer, you create a pool of architectures, I can add in nodes, I can change configurations, I can update without the traditional way that we used to do it in storage, which was, you know, all right, buy that box, take months to get it in there, load it up, transfer it over, retest it, uh, you know, all of those things that really kept your, 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 your time to value on storage down, um, and that's something that Pure and all the hyperconverged players have been attacking that kind of legacy mindset uh, that we had in storage for so long. Yeah, and of course, uh, Pure's approach to converged is in partnership with Cisco and, and presumably others, I'm not actually sure about that, but Cisco's the main partner there with Flashstack, yeah. that's their converge play. They kind of do a knock on hyper-converged, kind of depositioning it as sort of low end, kind of you know, uh, contained you know, within you know, sm small remote offices, whereas they're positioning Flashstack as the, the scalable internet infrastructure. Pure does very well with SaaS companies. Uh, they do, you know, they're, they're increasingly doing better with you know, Fortune 500, they still got a long way to go there. About 80% of their business is US, so there's a lot of upside internationally. We're talking about a company that'll be a billion dollars in their fiscal 2018, uh, which is fundamentally the year we're in now. They've got about a $2.4 billion market cap. They're growing at about 30% a year. Uh, and, and very interestingly, they have mid 60% gross margins. At one point last year, they had like 69.6% gross margin, which is unheard of. You know, it's, we haven't really seen this since back in the heydays of NetApp and, and EMC. The question is, is that sustainable? And of course, the big question that we have today, and we're going to talk to Scott Dietzen, nicknamed Dietz, a lot of nicknames here at Pure Storage, uh, about is the concept of a, of, a, of a large independent storage company. That concept is going away. It's like extinct, except for one company, really. NetApp is the only billion dollar storage company left. It's been 20 plus years, maybe even 25 years since that's occurred. What are your thoughts on that, Stu? You know, we, I wrote a piece uh, maybe eight years ago, can EMC remain independent? Recognizing that most of EMC's value was coming from VMware, and of course EMC could not remain independent. Do you think a company like Pure can unseat the leaders of Dell EMC, HPE, IBM and remain an independent storage company. Well, one of the things I always look at is what is kind of, where are they going to hit their plateau? They're, they're reaching towards a billion dollars and they, they do continue to grow. I think Pure still has plenty of headroom, but how long does it take them, Dave, to get to you know, three or five billion dollars? The reason I throw out that number is that's probably how much storage Amazon's doing today. Uh, you know, look at Amazon's a 15 billion dollar uh, company, somewhere between 15 and 30% of Amazon's business, and nobody in the storage industry talks about that because it just ties to my application, so I want to follow the applications, follow the data. Um, it, it's good to hear that Pure is getting in with a lot of SaaS providers from Wikibon data, two thirds of the public cloud data, uh, uh, I'm sorry, of the public cloud revenue is SaaS providers, so absolutely, here companies like Pure, SolidFire, uh, before when they were an independent company, sold to lots of service providers as well as SaaS providers. Uh, Cominario, a Massachusetts-based uh, flash company, sells to, I believe it's about half of their business is selling to those SaaS providers because these are companies that look at, okay, I need to own how I scale my environment, own those economics, um, and, and, and need to grow that. And just one more piece on that economics, Dave. You look at that kind of multi or hybrid cloud world. I, I, I bristle a little bit when I I hear Scott Dietzen kind of almost say, well, public cloud, it's in the corner. About 20% of the use cases fit in that environment. Yeah, we'll do snaps to uh, you know, Amazon, and we'll do some other things, but you, know, you don't put the public cloud in a corner and just say, oh, 20% of the market's there, because that's today. And it is still growing you know, 50, 75, 100%, depending on which public cloud you're talking about. We think that there's still plenty of upside, and that's, when does that become you know, a, a headwind that will slow the growth of, of what Pure's doing? Um, you, you see a lot of the other software co storage companies out there saying how do they become software. When we were at the Veeam show, uh, Dave, how did they really were, we're going to live in Azure. We're going to you know, partner with uh, AWS and they don't really care. Pure very much, their growth, their revenue, and their margins today are all built that they're going to be selling gear with that. Yes, they have the Purity One software and they have some cloud plays, but it very much seems to be saying that public cloud's not the direction, 
I'm, I'm sure Scott will probably give us a little bit more nuance there, uh, but you know, that, 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 that legacy change uh, to new distributed architectures has been a tailwind for Pure, and when will cloud uh, be something that will push against their growth? Well, we're going to ask Scott Deetson about that, uh, and you know, you're right on, I mean, public cloud clearly is growing, it's growing like crazy, particularly the SaaS component of that. Now, of course, that can be a tailwind for Pure because they do sell to SaaS companies. They even, Scott even had a slide up there today you know, showing Google, Uber, Facebook, AWS. I, did you infer, like I did, that they were implying that they were selling? To, the, to those companies? No, or? no, no, I, I, I saw because <laughs> in, uh, in the last quarterly report they talked about basically the number four, four through a thousand. Four through a thousand, right. So they're not selling to the top three that, 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 that they're clear on. So, okay, so the top three would be Amazon, Google, and Microsoft, right. but then there's Facebook and Uber, you know, possibly they could sell to those companies. A Spotify is a SaaS company, you know, so that SaaS part of the market is growing like crazy. Now the other point is, Wikibon released a study, we've been talking about it for the last couple of weeks on theCUBE, around the true private cloud market forecast. True private cloud is an on-prem infrastructure that substantially mimics the public cloud at a much lower cost. And we came up with this notion of true private cloud because there was so much cloud washing going on, which really was virtualization. Now the true private cloud is growing actually faster than any other cloud segment, now from a smaller base, granted. But we see about a $230 billion TAM over the next 10 years evolving. Now the most important part of this, and Scott Dietzen touched, touched upon this in the morning as did uh, Hat, using some nicknames again, that companies are really focused on lowering their IT labor costs. And we see $150 billion approximately of IT labor moving out of non-differentiated heavy, heavy lifting into what we sometimes call vendor R&D in the form of cloud or on-prem products appliances and other software frameworks that can automate and eliminate this low value provisioning and patching and LUN management. So Stu, you were very much involved in that true private cloud report. That market's exploding. I mean, to me, it's all about TAM expansion for Pure. They're a billion dollar company roughly, they're participating in a 30 or 40 billion dollar market, so they have a long way to go. Yeah, absolutely, um, because really Dave, it's about the application, it is not a winner takes all environment. When you look at multi-cloud, it's what applications, and even we start teasing apart pieces of my applications um, and where they live. So, you know, I look at that, there was a nice logo slide that Pure put up, and you say, okay, Hulu is a customer. Well, is Pure helping with their CDN? I really doubt it. You know, you look at Workday. Workday, up on stage at Amazon reInvent, talking about how they partner with Amazon. So, what applications are, is Pure winning? Which ones are their customers using the public cloud for? And how does all of that sort out? Um, you know, absolutely, true private cloud, is really that, that reinvention of the data center, that, that flipping, if you will, of, I mean, Dave, you, you probably know better than me, that the saying that you know, IT spends you know, 80 or 90% of their budget on keeping the lights on. How do we flip that uh, so that we can spend money on innovating, driving the business forward, um, you know, stop spending on the, one of our favorite terms, undifferentiated heavy lifting, and move to you know, innovate and drive the business and have IT serving those applications and serving the things uh, that, that help me differentiate from the competition and move faster. Um, because absolutely, I'm sure something we'll hear at this show is it's that agility and that speed is what companies need and, and pure with their you know, six nines of availability and that you know, if you buy it today, you're future proof, if you will, uh, is going to help customers say that they can have a platform that they buy today and know is going to serve them well in the future. Well, Mark Benioff, you know, I think was the first that I heard said it, or it might have been Peter Burris, I can't remember. <laughs> uh, but, but basically there are going to be many more SaaS companies coming out of non-tech companies than tech companies. That to me, Stu, is a big, big tailwind for a company like Pure, who under, who's software you know, first, software defined, knows how to sell to, to SaaS companies. The other thing is, Pure is the latest company, they didn't, use, they didn't say this, but they certainly, one could infer it, the latest company to basically say tape is dead. So it used to be, you know, sort of off-site back up to tape. Now they're talking flash to flash to cloud as the long-term retention. So a lot of really interesting things going on here. The venue is actually quite amazing. It's at Pier 70. This place is going to get torn down right after the show. It's a, it's a place that used to be an old 
steel mill. They used to make battleships here, about two battleships a year during yeah, the, World the War II. The new Warriors facility is going to be here in Dogpatch soon, yeah. and I know everybody's super excited about that. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, a lot of purple hats uh, here, a lot of, lot of excited Warriors fans. All right, we, we'll be back. we got day to day, uh, day, all day, wall to wall coverage of Pure Accelerate. Half, hashtag Pure Accelerate. This is theCUBE, I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. We'll be right back with Scott Dietzen right after this short break.